Um, I'm Grant, nice to meet you all. Um, unlike other people here, I, I'm a bit of a data geek. Um, do a little bit of analytics, a little bit of this thing called Tag Manager. Um, I've become a massive, massive fan of a technology called Data Studio. Uh, how many people? Ooh, we got a whoop, did we? Who, who whooped? Oh, one whoop. And any, other, any other people using Data Studio here? Nice, nice. No they know. Though. What's that? No, no more whoops though. No, it's okay. We'll, we'll hopefully we'll do some more whoops later. Um, I'm also, I, I teach at General Assembly. Um, I've been doing uh, Tag Manager and Data Studio. And one of the things that it's helped me um, is to do this. When, when I first met Bav, what was it, two years ago, Bav? Um, we were at MeasureFest, and uh, I finished up my talk talking about the, the ultimate magic that a data analyst can do, which is to make sure that they're sharing their experience and they're sharing their use of data. Data shouldn't be locked up, and the more you do, um, the better it gets. I, I, I've moved on a little bit from this, and this is actually my starting point for what became this talk. I, I, I rewrote this talk a couple of times because um, over the past few weeks at, at Photobox, I, I've picked up a couple of things that um, frustrated me, but also helped me to kind of realize that there's a really amazing opportunity. So I'd like to share some of these thoughts with you guys. And, you know, please don't treat this as gospel. This is something that is very much a work in progress. Um, when I first joined Photobox, this is what happened to me. I, I thought if I share Google Analytics information to everybody, it's going to be amazing. Everyone will understand. Everyone will come to me and they'll be like, Grant, we understand everything about data. Amazing. I realized that fundamentally, there is a huge chasm. And, and this comes from maybe because we're set up as a data team and we have the rest of the business sitting around us. Um, but there's a big gap. And, and, and I'll, I'll give you an illustration of this gap. Um, did someone say that they were SEO? Yeah? Um, Mr. SEO man, hello, I'm Grant. Nice to meet you. I prepared a report for you to help. What do you think? There you go. Spent ages on it. Yeah? Yeah, very good. It's fantastic. <laughs> Great. Um, I think we've got a CEO around here somewhere, don't we? CEO? Finally got my chance to actually show my data to the CEO. This definitely is a CEO. Yeah? What, what, what do you think? What do you think? Yeah? Good. Nodding. Fantastic. We're doing amazingly. I, I, I know for a fact that we also have someone here from the CRM team because he, he works at Photobox with me. So I'm, I'm sorry, Julian, but... Uh, this is for you. Uh, wh what did you think? I didn't know Julian when I first joined, which I'm really gutted about. <laughs> Thumbs up. Amazing. Yeah, I'm, I must be doing really well. Yeah? Um, that's the problem, is that because we're a data team, we're always sitting on the outside. We're in the periphery. And we're not part of the business close-up. Sometimes they, they solve this problem by, let's bring a data analyst into our team, and they become part of the crew, part of the buddies. They're the inside people. They're, they're the people that happen. But I actually think that there's a much bigger opportunity that we're missing out on that. By, by just passing little bits of data into teams, we're missing out on the bigger picture. And this, these are my three bridges. If we could build these bridges, I think everyone would be successful. Um, and this is my first one over here, which is build out a product. And I'm not saying go and you know, set up your own website, you know, create a screaming frog, or you know, build your own data analytics. You, you can do that. But I, I think there's a better way. Um, who, who, who follows lean, agile, all these sort of things? Do you guys all follow that? Where does data sit in the process? Everywhere. Everywhere. Ooh, very good. It's everywhere in here. Where, 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 any, any other takes? Where, where does data sit? Nowhere. Nowhere. That's, another, that's actually also a very good use case. That's true. <laughs> um, some people say it's over here. Some people say it's over here. But I'm going to use an example of a video that I edited really badly to illustrate a, a scenario. So this is the e-commerce manager. I know there's lots of product people here, so I'm not going to... So. Yeah, so we're going to get ready to go. Yes, we know it's going to... Oh, data. We have to go back to space dock. It's going to be trouble. Team member. Let's, let's, let's ignore the data. What should we do, Captain? Where should we go? Where's the next step? Second step. Yes. We've made a decision. 
It's going to be amazing. Look at everyone is so happy. We've made a decision. We're going there. <laughs> Screw the data. Who cares? It doesn't make a difference. We know where we're going because the captain says that's the way. And unfortunately, I've seen that represented. I'm not saying that happens in photo box, but I've seen it represented in lots and lots of cases. Um, and, and, and I think this is, this is our opportunity. If we think about a, a typical store process, you have people coming into a website. Hopefully, there's some conversion rate people here who understand this process. Um, they come and buy products, don't they? And then at the end, we have customers. Hooray. We've got a conversion rate. We spent ages. Let's think about this conversion rate. We've got some amazing designers, raw material expertise. We're building amazing products. That's, that's what we're here for, yeah? But data is the new oil. And I, I found that with data, we're spending so much time yanking the stuff out of the ground that we're not having a chance to actually sit and think, what should we be building with it? What amazing products can we build with, with petrol, with, with oil? Cars, rockets, spaceships, all these kind of things we can build. But we're spending so much time pulling that stuff out that it's making it really hard for us. So I want to try and give you guys a, an alternative view. Let's treat data as the product, OK? We've got internal visitors. Julian, hello. Welcome, Mr. CRM person. Nice to see you. Um, do you want to try out some of our data products? And he sits there looking at the stuff. Our CEO, do you want to try out some of our data products? Do you like it? Does it taste nice? Is it good? Is it useful? Does it help you? Mr. SEO man, is it helpful? Does it work? Amazing. If it doesn't, the problem is that we're not getting feedback. The only thing we're getting is thumbs up. Great job. Will you give me another report? Will you give me another thing? It's not helping. We're not treating data like it's a product. If we were to do the same thing and this was a store, people would think we were crazy. Right? We've got all these amazing raw materials that we could be pulling in. And instead, we're basically doing reports, sharing things, giving little bits of insight being the bottleneck to people getting to what the real good stuff is, the oil. Um, sorry, Bav, I know you've got loads of graphs on screens, but graphs on screens are great for looking like you're doing lots of good stuff with data. Right? Those should be automated alerts. If anything's not in its place, there should be emails going out automatically. We should have bots monitoring it. That's what products are. A wall of data in Excel. Look how well we're doing. You understand it. I've got, given you everything. You figure it out. No. There's amazing APIs in Google, in, 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 in Word, in spreadsheets. You can do some amazing things to transform data in Google Slides to automatically pull the stuff out and generate insights. Single-use PowerPoint slides. If you guys have tried Data Studio, Julian, I'm actually going to, sorry, Julian, I'm going to bully you again. But when I, when I explained Data Studio to Julian for the first time, he said to me, he says, so it's a little bit like PowerPoint with a back end. Yeah, and actually that's the best quote I think I've heard ever because it sums it up so, sim so, so simply. It's exactly what that is. It allows us to turn those PowerPoint reports that we've churned out over and over again into something that actually can make a difference and we can improve and we can do amazing stuff with. This dude used to work, works for a chair company. I'm sure you've heard of him, Steve Howard. He says, right now we're hitting what's called peak stuff. In the old days, it was like, hey, let's buy more, let's buy more, let's buy more, let's buy more. But now, we're getting to the point that actually, I can have pretty much anything I want delivered next day. So it becomes much more now about the quality. Mr. CEO, what would be a quality report for you to help you to make your decisions? There you go. Mr. CRM, what would be the powerful thing that would help you to change your business. And Julian and I have been working on stuff, but we can't talk about it, unfortunately, because unfortunately, Photobox won't let me share any of our internal stuff. But hopefully, we'll turn it into things that we can share. But I'll, I'll give you one of our examples, which I've actually been able to open source. Um, if you look at what Starbucks are doing, they're spending so much time trying to understand those customers. And they have data people who are spending ages trying to understand those customers. But guess what? They're putting people's names on their cups. Yeah, it's a powerful thing. It's making a connection. It's personalizing the stuff. It's helping people to really, sorry about Starbucks, but it, it's good marketing, bad coffee. Um, but it, building that connection with people is amazing. And actually, if you could do that with your products and your data products, it's incredible what can happen. So again, taking some of these things, don't think of data as part of the process. Part of the process. Data is the process. The, the bar that I think of success for any data team 
is how quickly you're evolving your products internally to help your business to smash their goals. That's the bar. And sure, you can second people out to all these different places and try to get them, but unless you're focusing on building the right set of tools to make the team really power themselves, you're missing out on a huge trick. I found this chart on e-consultancy, um, and it was basically someone asked, what products would you build? A-B testing, customer journey analysis, uh, customer feedback, competitive benchmarking, segmentation, abandoned email. I'm sure a few of you have done some of those. I guarantee you none of, the, none of you have done all of those, or be, maybe very few. Is there anyone that's done absolutely all of those and said they've nailed it? I'll be very surprised, but um, this was in 2012 that they did the survey. So it's that amount of time that's gone past. And again, we asked them, what's holding you back? What's stopping you from doing and delivering those products for your dreams? And it's again, it's all these kind of things. So it's actually the second part that I picked up on, which is one of the things I picked up from learning with Julian and, and other people in my team, uh, in, in the teams in the company, that I've actually been able to work out what, how we get over those hurdles. How do we get over those things to actually deliver on that, that promise that we can to make data into the best products that are around? This is what's happening. We're evolving. Those are the old technologies. These are some of the new technologies. We're making sure that we're pulling all of our data in together. Um, if you guys haven't done a SQL course, I would thoroughly recommend it. But the problem is that with business, they get caught behind. This is what business is. Thruster shaft, 87% damage. Aft vector guards, 96% damage. Structural breaches in quadrants 32, they go business owner. 34, 40, oh, 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 what, uh, what about the engines? Forward thruster shaft, 87% damage. Computer. What about the engines? The Why person. don't we have power? The beryllium sphere is fractured, under stress. It's fractured. Can it be repaired? Computer, can it be repaired? Damage to beryllium sphere, irreparable. Oh. New source of beryllium must be secured. We need another one. So analyzing the data, putting it to the ship. sequel. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> computer, is there a, a replacement beryllium sphere on board? Computer, is there a replacement beryllium sphere on board? Negative. Uh, no uh, reserve beryllium sphere uh, exists on board. No, we have no extra beryllium sphere on board. You know, that is really getting annoying. Yeah. I have one job on this lousy ship. It's stupid, but I'm going to do it, okay? Anyway, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, but effectively, you can see the frustration. With all these more complicated technologies, data is actually becoming harder for people to get to. So it's even better that we start building products. We start using things like Data Studio to really deliver on the promise and, and break down the teams. One of the things that I've been working on is actually trying to build up Data Studio ambassadors in each one of our teams. I don't want to call them ambassadors because I don't like the name, but we'll come up with a better name. And it's been amazing. People are sharing data between them, trying out new things. There was one idea that I had, and I just suggested to Julian in passing, and he's actually managed to work his whole team to be able to help actually deliver that. And as soon as you get that, that becomes really powerful. And this has been my, this is my trophy. This is my greatest trophy. I think I got it about two weeks ago. Julian saw the fat guy, and he's like, hey, I'll give him chocolate. <laughs> yeah, which is honestly, I, I, I can't tell you, that's worth more to me to see that I've actually helped someone. And the fact that he's here at an analytics talk shows that actually just sharing a bit of that data knowledge helps a lot. And I promise you, I didn't bribe him to come. Um, just to, uh, one thing about Data Studio, you know, effectively by training Julian and guys on how to use it, it's become a, a real game changer. And it's something that there's some really amazing courses online, there's free videos, there's tons of stuff that's out there. Um, you can suddenly start building products. And I'm not saying that Data Studio will be the final result, but it's a really quick way to prototype stuff. It's super easy to get things out and get things done. And because it's built on top of the web, you can even do some really cool customizations. Um, this is an example from Google that they released, which Julian, sorry, that's, that's going to replace our annotations uh, one day, hopefully soon. Um, but you can see, makes it really easy to be able to see it. This isn't a chart, this is an interactive graph. And I'll, I'll share the link on Twitter afterwards. Um, we're doing two more minutes. Um, this is a sand key chart. Pretty much any JavaScript visualization that you can think of, you can deliver now through Data Studio. And the API isn't amazing, but it's actually pretty good and it's getting a lot better and they're doing some amazing things with it. 
Um, this is one that I put together. So this is one of my, my, my uh, things, but I, I've agreed with the, with the team internally that I'm actually going to open source this. So all of these are actually open source components. I'm um, just waiting for them to go through the GitHub process with the Data Studio. Um, this is a radial control for percentages, um, different colors. You can customize the colors. Um, pretty easy to use, and already I've had people saying this, how, how much it's helping them. A little simple thing, but it immediately changes. Um, I'm pulling in data here from something called PageSpeed Insights. Do you know PageSpeed Insights? Yeah, so not only get the PageSpeed score, but also a list of improvements. So we can actually turn this from being the next version of this. You can see at the moment how many um, improvements they recommend per page. But you can actually, you'll be able to get the data out straight out to actually have the list of all the recommendations. Really easy, and if you guys are, any of you guys are developers or want to even try development, please feel free to join and contribute. So the big change from when I, when I, when I met Bab last time and where I am now is that I still believe in sharing knowledge. That's the most important thing that I recommend to everybody. Share your knowledge and your expertise, you get so much more back. Yeah? Um, but the main thing that I think we've built up, worked with Julian and Alessandro, with all of the guys at Photobox, is that we've started to realize that we have a commonality of purpose. And it's that commonality of purpose that will turn you from being an amazing team to being an incredible team. Yeah? We're not sitting there trying to build bridges. We're thinking about what else we can do. Yeah? We're thinking about building spaceships. We're thinking about building planes. Yeah? That, and the last thing that I want to just say is, the science of awesome, I've got tons of ideas of what that science of awesome is, but I'm pretty sure if you can hit that purpose thing, you'll find what works for you, and that's what it is, finding the right thing for your organization and what, work, and what works in your, in your company. Anyway, thanks guys, that's it.